Let's talk about logarithms. This is always the thing that you talk about after you talk about exponential functions. They kind of go together, exponential functions and logarithms. I thought we should do just a little bit of a review about this. Logarithm, like that, right? Yeah, anyway. Um, Logarithms, they, uh, they are kind of the opposite of doing exponential functions. In my experience, a lot of people are kind of mystified or confused by logarithms, so I thought we should just do some, some review about this. All right, here's the definition of what the logarithm is. So one thing um, that is immediately slightly confusing, there's a lot of different logarithms. They all have a different base. So this, when you see this, this means the logarithm with base a. Remember, exponential functions have a base that's, you know, something like a to the x. a is the base, x is the exponent. Logarithms also have a base. That's the little number that you see down here is the base. Log base a of x. The definition of this, this is the exponent in a to the what? equals x. All right, this is the definition of the logarithm. So, when you see log base a of x, it means what this is is a number, and it is whatever number is necessary to go here to make this true. All right, it's, it's a little it's a little weird as a definition. All right, there, what's weird about this is there isn't like a specific formula by which you can compute this. All right, you basically have to either, for some reason, uh, you can just know the answer sometimes, um, or you have to do it on your calculator. But uh, sometimes it is actually fairly easy. Like, for instance, what is log base 10 of 100? What is it? It's a number, right? And what, is, what number is it? It's the number. You can, you can write this out sort of on the side. It means, so the a here is 10, right? So this is 10 to the one equals the x, which is 100. So what number goes there? The answer is 2. So that's what the log base 10 of 100 is. What is the log base 10 of, say, 10 million? For the same reason, you're asking yourself, 10 to what power equals 10 million? If you think about it, actually, this number here is just going to be the number of zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's the log base 10 of 10 million is 7. All right. The log base 10 is one that you can kind of do in your head. Um, it is, if it's just a power of 10 here, it's the number of zeros in the uh, in the number, you could say, um, what is the log base 10 of, you know, um, let's say 182. The answer is something like 2 point, blah, 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 blah. it's a little bit more than 2, right? Because this one is 2. In order to get to 3, you have to go all the way up to 1,000, right? So in between 100 and 1,000, there'll be 2 point whatever. This is on the low end of that range. So this is slightly greater than 2. So you, log base 10, you can kind of estimate in your head. It has to do basically with how many digits are in the number there. Um, the log base 10, because of that, because it, it is sort of easy to do in your head, this for a long time was called the common logarithm. And people still call it that, although it's not such a big deal anymore. Being able to do it in your head is not a big deal when you can use calculators. But back in the day, the base 10 logarithm was used um, very commonly. It's called the common logarithm. And in fact, so common that uh, when you're talking about the base 10 logarithm, it's just written like this. So if you ever see log with no number down there, this means is called the common logarithm. And it means it means base 10, all right? So if you don't see the base there, the uh, standard implied base, if it's not listed specifically, is 10, all right? And that's called the common logarithm. Uh, not such a big deal, actually, these days, because the, the only reason people uh, treated that one specially is because you could kind of do it in your head. Um, you could sort of estimate the values in your head. Not a big deal anymore because people don't really care about that. Let's let's just try some other examples. How about this log base 2 of 8? What is that? Remember, what this means is it is the exponent which is required to make that true. So what power goes here in order to make 2 to some power equal 8? The answer is 
three. All right. This is how you do logarithms. Um, you can only, you know, it's only going to work out nicely in some cases. If I ask you to do log base two of nine, that would mean two to what power equals nine? Well, I wrote the same thing again. Nine. The only sensible answer to this is uh, I don't really know. Or you could say it's a little bit greater than three, but you can't say exactly what this is. So I don't know. This is, um, you know, slightly greater than three. But other than that, you can't really say um, too much. How about, let's just do a few more of these. How about this log base three of nine? That means three to what power equals nine? And the answer is two. That's a fairly easy one. How about this? Log base three of one ninth. This would mean three to some power equals one ninth. What do you think of that? Can you get one ninth by doing a power of three? The fact this is a fraction is a little weird. When you raise three to an exponent means you multiply three by itself over and over again. You're never gonna get a fraction, are you? Well, actually, if you recall, um, there is such a thing as negative exponents. What does a negative exponent mean? Actually, it means kind of this, right? It, it makes the thing into the, uh, it moves the thing into the denominator. So can you make this happen with a negative exponent? The answer is yes, you can. Um, three to the negative two power, this would be one over three to the two, which is one ninth. So the answer here is negative two. That's the exponent you need to uh, see up there. So you can actually get negative numbers of logarithms, generally speaking, if, if this value here is less than one, that is to say if it's a fraction, then um, you're going to get a negative answer for the logarithm. All right, uh, there is no such thing as the log of zero because you really could never get zero or in fact any negative number here. So log with, with any base, this is not just true for, uh, you know, three here or whatever, the log with any base is undefined for x less than or equal to zero because there really is no way that you could get zero or a negative number by choosing some kind of a weird exponent. All right. Okay, there is a special logarithm. We already talked about the base 10 log is not all that special. There is one though that is quite special. A special logarithm, I am referring to the natural logarithm, which we write ln of x. This is called the natural logarithm, and this is the definition. It is the log with base e. Remember the number e is that number that we use in exponential functions. If you choose a logarithm with that base, then that's called the natural logarithm. So another way you could say this as a definition of the natural logarithm, ln of x, um, is the exponent in e to what power equals x, right? This is, I'm just writing the same definition of logs because the natural log is the logarithm whose base is e, all right? And just for the same reasons that like uh, in calculus, you know, e is a special value as the base of an exponential function. It turns out for basically the same reasons the natural logarithm is kind of has a special role among all the logarithms. It has nicer properties than the other logarithms do. All right, the natural logarithm. Um, uh, uh, so this is my sort of basic introduction to logarithms. This natural logarithm you basically can never do by hand um, because the e is not a nice number that you could ever tell what the powers are, are equal to. Um, one exception would be if you ever see something like ln of e to the 8. What is that equal to? Well, if you just write this out, this would mean what is the exponent? e to what power equals e to the 8? Eight. 8. The answer is 8, right? So, come on, 8. So uh, basically, whenever you see, you know, uh, ln of e to some power, ln of e to the x, this uh, this always equals x, right? You could imagine sort of the ln sort of cancels out the e or kills the e, and what you're left with is the x. All right. Other than this, though, you basically can't say for sure what, um, in your head, you can't tell what the values of the natural log are going to be. You just use the ln button on your calculator. All right. Um, one important property, actually, this is sort of a special case of a more general property which holds for any logarithms. So this is very important 
from a certain point of view, this is the whole point of logarithms. Very important property. If you have the log base A of some power, say, uh, you know, B to the X, there's a thing you can do. You can move the exponent out in front of this log and make it that. All right. Why that's important, uh, you'll see if you try to do any kind of word problems involving exponential functions. This is actually very important. And we, you know, if you watch that example about exponential functions before, you saw you use the logarithm. So you can you, you can do this rule with the ln or with any other logarithm. The point of this is you can move the x out of the exponent. Over here, the x is inside of the exponent. Over here, it's not. And if you wanted, if you had some sort of formula in which you wanted to solve for x, for example. Here, it would be easy because you have the x here, and you can just divide this over to the other side, and you will have solved for x. Whereas here, it's not clear what could you possibly do to solve for the x all by itself. The answer is you do the log and move the thing down, right? This is extremely important property of uh, the logarithm.